<laughs> so this is part two. In general, if the place is not kosher, it's not recommended to get anything from them. Right. And the reason why is because even though the product itself can be kosher, you can't rely on it. And so, for example, when you go to when you go to Israel, this it's much easier to get kosher meat in Israel than it is in America. Right. Most places are have kosher meat. Most most uh, butchers have you know sl slaughter the kosher way, and it's much cheaper than here. But you see a lot of places that sell kosher meat, but they don't have the kosher certificate on the door. They're not considered kosher places, and the reason why is because these people are not uh, Shomrei Shabbat, and therefore they're not considered reliable for okay. them to have, uh, their, their food is not considered uh, uh, kosher. So earlier today, I showed the guys a, a verse about, from the Torah itself that's very, very important for everyone to know about Shabbat. You know, the thing is about Shabbat is that, and the Torah itself is that, you know, once we know that this is real, and really from Hashem, then it's really important for us to know what Hashem is telling us here. And the, the you know, one of the, there's three core mitzvot, uh, mitzvot uh, in, in the Torah. There's plenty of them, 613 things that we need to do or not do, but the, there's three core covenants that we have with Hashem. One is the Shabbat, second one is Tefillin, and third one is Brit. Not just the Brit Milah, but also keeping our Brit uh, and respecting it. So now, Shabbat... When somebody says Shabbat, it's important, but of course, something more important could be murder. You know, if I, I shouldn't kill, right? Hashem told, uh, told us in part of the Ten Commandments, thou not shall not kill. But how do we know what's more important? The way we know what's more important is by what the punishment is. Because Hashem tells us, if we do this, we get this punishment. If we do this, we get a different punishment. So we know that whichever one has a worse punishment is more critical, is more important. To keep. So, for example, if I steal a million dollars, the government's going to take me to jail for five years, let's say. But if I <coughs> steal a hundred million dollars, they may take me to jail for 20 years. So I know from that that stealing a hundred million is worse than stealing one million. Or if I steal one million, is five years in jail. But if I kill ten people, then I know that the, uh, the uh, you know, I'm going to have a life sentence in jail. So I know that killing 10 people is worse than stealing a million dollars. So same concept with this. So Talat tells us that killing somebody, the punishment is death penalty. But someone who violates the Shabbat, it's much worse. It's dying in this world, dying in the next world, and also being cut off from the nation of Israel. Meaning not being considered Jewish. Now, the, the, the reason why this is important is because most people don't know this. And it's not only because they don't study Torah, but it's also because the rabbis are scared to tell them. You know, they're scared to scare people. They want to, they want to be nice to people and friendly with people, and they think that hopefully if they go to shul enough times, maybe one day they're going to keep Shabbat, but the reality of it is that I've seen from my own experience with rabbis, with people, and dealing with them for a long time, is that if you don't people, if you don't tell people the truth, they never have a reason to believe it and to find out for it on their own. And what ends up happening is that even after they find out the truth, after doing something for 20 years, they get so used to doing something that it's very, very hard for them to change. So even people that do know Torah, but have been violating it for most of their life, and they finally found out the truth, they're already 60, 70 years old. It's very, very difficult for them to change. So that's why a lot of people are scared to tell people the truth. Me, I don't have anything to lose. And the people that I learned from, like Rabbi uh, Ephraim Kachlon, my cousin, and uh, Rabbi Mizrahi, these are two people that tell the truth because they have nothing to lose. So they tell me what the Torah says, what Hashem's well, Torah says. Oh, uh, it's Tommy. You guys know each other, right? Well, yeah. So he's the Cohen. So when you, uh, I haven't told the story yet. I'm still telling him about the. Uh, I'm filling him in about Shabbat. We were talking before. 
Um, so when, when somebody has a lot to lose, like for example, a rabbi is scared to lose his job, or scared to lose donations, or scared to scare PR people away, then, you know, if, if let's say if I have something on the line, if I have money on the line, I'm scared to lose it. And it's tough, because it's very hard to make everybody happy. But when you get the truth from somebody, because they, you know, when they don't have nothing to lose, they're not expecting any donation, they're not, I'm not paying them anything, and the reality is they're only doing it because they're there to save souls. They're there to save people, to help people. Then you're more likely to get the truth. You're more likely to get the real truth. And the real truth, in my opinion, is the only way. Even though it's scary, even though it's not politically correct, even though it's not the nicest thing to hear all the time because a lot of us are sinning every minute because we don't know. The reality of it is that I'd rather know and, and, and what I'm doing is wrong or right, and choose whether I want to continue it, then leave, live ignorant my whole life. And the way to explain that, the way to, to really, really uh, see the difference, is that if you have two people, and both of them have cancer. Both of them have cancer. Terrible. Cancer. One guy, and both of them have the same type of cancer. And both of them have one month to live. One month to live. One guy you told and one guy you didn't told. You didn't tell. Who's better off? The one that you didn't tell. No. The one that you didn't... I mean, that's the way you look at it. Why, naturally, you would look at it. The one that you didn't tell is going to live his life like nothing's wrong. Problem is that the day is going to come and he's going to be completely unprepared for it and he's going to spend those 30 days living his life, going to work, spending his whole day moving, you know, driving himself crazy to make money, driving himself crazy to pay the bills. In reality, you've got 30 days to live. None of that stuff matters anymore. What matters is you go with your family, you connect with Hashem, you connect with life. Who cares about work anymore? But if he doesn't know, he's going to spend his last 30 days living a regular life that's start, meaningless. He's praying more than he ever did. But if the guy that knows, even though initially is sad, even though it hurts him that he only has 30 days to live, he's going to spend those 30 days as if it's his entire life. He's going to spend it with the people he loves. He's going to connect with who he loves. He knows the truth. He knows, I only have 30 days. That's it. I need to make sure that I make those 30 days valuable. That means I'm not going to spend even one second of my day being unhappy. One second of my day going to work just to make money. Who needs this money? I'm going, I'm, I'm not going to be here. So that's why the truth is the only way it works. The truth is always better off. Even though it hurts, and sometimes it hurts a lot. And trust me, I've heard some truth in my, li uh, in my life, about my own life, before I did tshuva. Hurt in a horrendous way. In such a way that it actually literally caused me to start crying, not uh, like uncontrollably. Not even realizing, I, I can't believe I did this, I can't believe I did this. I can't. You just lo you start realizing, oh my God, how, how I'm so terrible, I'm so there. You know, start feeling sorry for yourself. But in reality, if it wasn't for that, my eyes would never be opened. And that's the thing. So it's definitely always better to be truthful and there's only one version of the truth. There's no two versions of the truth. If there's two versions, not, then one of them is a lie. But you're not offending somebody by telling them that? So I'll, 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 answer, I'll answer your question with a story. The rabbi from Lovavitch, the one who passed uh, maybe 20 years ago, said a story one time about the same exact issue that you said. You know, what, what, you're offending them. So imagine this. Imagine you had a roommate and your roommate said to you, listen, I worked all night. I worked all week. I'm going to sleep right now. Under, I'm shutting off my phone. Under no condition, I don't care who calls me, who wants me or anything. Under no condition, I want you to wake me up. Do not wake me up. I want to sleep. Until I wake up. Even if I sleep for three days, don't wake me up. Fair enough. That's what he wants. His request, right? He's your roommate. So he says, okay, go ahead. Go to sleep. Now, if that guy 
goes to sleep, and then you go downstairs and you realize you start smelling something, and you start smelling that there's fire, and the building that you're in is starting to go on fire. It's burning up, it's on a, you're on the third floor, it's on the first floor, it's on the second floor, and you see that's going to reach him. Now if you go and wake him up, is he going to be upset at you that you woke him up? <laughs> How dare you wake me up? I want to sleep? Yeah, he's going to be upset because he said uh, that no matter what, don't wake me up even if it's his life, even though, three days. Oh, okay, so you think he prefers to die? No, 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 he doesn't prefer to die. He's saving a life and the point of the story is... You the point, the point is this. Story. Somebody, somebody, if, if, I, if he's sleeping... And he tells me not to wake him up. Which I'm doing right now because it's a long day. So I'm not thinking like... <laughs> if he's sleeping, if he's sleeping, and uh, if he's sleeping, and he doesn't want to be woken up, but right. then I end up waking him up because if I don't wake him up, he's going to die. Right. He's not going to be questioning why I woke him up. He's going to realize for himself that I did him a favor for waking him up. The same it. thing goes for somebody who doesn't know the truth. You're not, you don't have to worry about offending people for telling them the truth that Hashem wrote us a letter and told, it's called the Torah. And he told us in the Torah that someone who violates Shabbat is worse than the murderer. Someone who violates Shabbat yeah, is, some, to... is someone that is not only getting the punishment similar to someone who murdered, but he gets a worse punishment than the next life. And on top of that, he's not even considered part of Am Yisrael. So he can call himself Jewish all he wants, but in reality, based on the Torah, he's not considered. But hold on. So that may offend him, but initially, but when he realizes that this Shabbat has a worse punishment than murder, it could potentially open his eyes. You know what? I'm sorry, we're sitting here, and uh, I'm, like I said, it's a long day, yeah. and I'm not wearing a keep out, so... God, uh, yeah, let me I, I'll sure. get one for my car. I have in my car. Oh, I have plenty of them yeah. in the house. Um... Give me a second. Direct me. <laughs> and try actually the drawer over there in the kitchen. Okay. The drawer, this right? One? Yeah, I think there should be something in there. No? In 